Hi, it's Jesse. Today on the show, a legendary TV dad. You know him from Married with Children and Modern Family. It's my TV dad, Ed O'Neill. Youngstown was not a good place to live. There was nothing there for me. The only thing that I had that I could have done, and thank God I didn't, was organized crime. This is Dinner's On Me, and I'm your host, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. When I was putting together a list of dream guests for this podcast, Ed O'Neill was on the very top of the list. I mean, having played his son for 11 years, we naturally became very close. But seriously, Ed's life is one for the books, and I just wanted to share it with everyone. His stories are incredible. Each story he tells about his early years or his career seems to top the last story he told. Ed has always been a tad shy around press, so I was so thrilled when he immediately agreed to be a guest on this podcast. I did wait until season two because I wanted to make sure I knew exactly what I was doing before I asked him on. I was so eager to spend some one-on-one time with my TV dad, but I was even more excited for my listeners, who were undoubtedly going to be treated to some of his epic stories. And once again, Ed did not disappoint. I asked Ed to meet me at Lunetta, a charming restaurant by chef Rafael Lunetta. He's been well known on the West Side for quite a while now. He's a familiar face at farmers markets and the beach. He's a surfer. He's also a big reason that the whole small plates movement took off in the mid aughts. The thing I love about Lunetta is that they have lots of familiar comfort dishes that are just, you know, dialed up a notch. Great sandwiches, burgers, steaks. I thought this would be a perfect place for Ed, but he was nowhere to be found. Hello. You're lost? The streets of Santa Monica can be confusing. We'll ignore the fact that Ed lived on the west side for roughly three decades. There's... Yeah. Jesus Christ. This is, I mean, I know this area. Uh, I don't know if you do, Ed. Well, I guess I don't. <laughs> um, now I'm at 11820. Okay. So I must I have to turn around. I offered to stand on the side of the street and flag him down, but he said that was overdoing it. Although there were moments I thought my intervention might be necessary. And I'm gonna go under the freeway here in a second. Okay. After I run over this girl. (laughs) Don't run over anyone. (laughs) So this went on for quite a while. He had gone all the way to the beach and then back. So he'd basically done a tour of Santa Monica, but eventually he made it. I I can't believe I was uh, lost. I you know, can. I even, I, it actually reminds me, remember when you came to see Fully Committed on Broadway? It reminds me worse. exactly of that because And I you, thought I knew Broadway. You thought you knew Broadway. Uh, <laughs> you were you knew that you the show was at the Lyceum, but you didn't know which way on, on 46 yeah, or whatever. I, I was going west. You were going west and you should have been going east. It's yes. on the east side of Broadway. Yes. And you walked basically all the way to the river. Oh, it was crazy. And then and back. Then, and then, and then back you didn't the have your way. phone on you, so you couldn't, because no. you just left it in the hotel room. And so you were wandering the streets of New York with your modern family hat on, asking tourists if they knew where Jesse Tyler, you didn't remember the name of the play, no. if they knew where Jesse Tyler Ferguson was doing his play. It was, un- I'm lucky I found it. Really I know. Really lucky I found it. And of course, I was late. Was I late? You told me you missed the first, I like, missed the first little like, bit. minutes yeah. or something. Yeah. So how many um, guests have you had on this show? This is we're in our second season now, so you oh are like the 26th or something. Great. So I kind of know what I'm doing now. Good. I don't. I know. So you're lucky and, that and you do, and I don't. I've had Julie on. I've had Sarah on. I knew you had those two guys. Yeah. On. Um, wait, but no, I was going to say you're not. You're not. I know you're not on social media or anything. But did you oh. know after that reunion we had because we had that printed photo of Ty? Yes. Did you know that the internet thought that we had gathered because Ty had passed away? Yes, I saw that. <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Hilarious. Also, oh like, kind God. of confirmation that the internet is just full of misinformation and this Well, cesspool. the other thing I noticed, too, is I brought my 17-year-old daughter. Yeah. Just because she knows Sophia. And yeah. she got, like, someone somehow found out who she was. And she had this, on her thing, it just blew up like Really? I, I don't know. Are you, you're Ed's daughter? Wow, how old are you? And oh, ew, stuff. Yeah. no, my Crazy. God. Jeez. She loved it, of course. 
But I didn't. I wasn't crazy about that. But no, we had fun. I had not. fun. I had so much fun. And you know, I, I drove Aubrey home. Like I carpooled with her. I almost said, "Do you know what you're doing?" It, you know, but she had to. Get, she had to have a ride. No, she, she. Her mom dropped her off. Yeah. And then I drove her home. Drove she her looks home. great, by the way. Doesn't she? Oh I know. I'm so proud of her. I just seen her in her school play. She was really good, by the way. She was really good in the play. And um, but Justin and I were laughing because I've spent so many scenes with Aubrey you know, with her in the back of the car, you know, we're shooting these car scenes. Yeah. And it was just like, it was just like that. She was sitting in the middle and you were, of the back seat so she could be like, you're looking, you know, where's the, the camera? Line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so weird. <laughs> but it was such a fun night. I'm oh so glad we did God. that. Plum. Hi, how are you? How are you? Is that going to be besides water? Uh, do you want anything besides water? Do you want a glass of wine or? No, just water is fine. Yeah, I'm fine with water you too. Can. Thank you. We're good. Thank Thanks. You. Thank you. It's interesting because like with people, that I've known, I've worked so closely with for a lot of years. You don't know a thing about us. Well, I don't know a single thing about you. The one thing I didn't know is that you worked in the steel mills. Yeah, but I got in the mills about, when I was like in, in, freshman in college. Oh, okay, okay. I would work the summers in the mills. Yeah. Because my father had worked there, my grandfather had worked there, right. and my brother worked there after me. That's that's just unbelievable. It's good good training for someone. For what? You know, it's, it's a good, good uh, incentive to get out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but you were doing theater also in Youngstown. I started or is that theater college? right around that time. Yeah, the last, you know, stint in the mill. Right, but I mean, you were like an athletic guy. You're like, you know, yeah. you, you. I mean, I. How yeah. did you like fit in with that group? With the mill workers? No, with the theater people. Oh, the th oh, very weird. It was very strange, because I had been working as a bellhop in Florida. Okay in Fort Lauderdale, when I was cut by the Steelers. Right, I want to talk about that too, yeah. So I hooked up with my college roommate. His name was Sammy Angott. Sammy pitched short relief for the Pirates, Pittsburgh wow. Pirates. So I was a rookie with the Pittsburgh Steelers. I got a job at the Galt Ocean Mile Hotel, <laughs> which was the only hotel in Lauderdale actually on the beach. And we had a little apartment on the uh, canals. Yeah. When you were recruited by the, the Steelers, Chuck Knoll was the head First coach. First year. Right? That is, okay, so I don't know a lot about sports. You know this about yeah. me, but even I know who Chuck Knoll is. Yeah. I mean, that's a big deal. He He's like one of the most guy. iconic head coaches of all time. Yeah, oh yeah, four Super Bowls. Yeah, four, and he like has one of the longest careers of any head coach. I mean. He was a wine connoisseur. He uh -huh. was a very intelligent guy. Very kind of sophisticated guy. And, uh, and I really liked him. <clears throat> and, you know, I didn't make it. I mean, right. he basically said, Ed, look, you know, you're trying to make the team and learn the position you never played. That's hard. My first year. So, wait, you were recruited um, from college and you were playing a different position. Yeah. And then when you were w with the Steelers, you were, they wanted you to play something different or? We didn't have that position on our college team. It was oh. an outside linebacker. And in the college, we ran what they call a 5-4 Okay. There's a middle guard and two linebackers behind uh -huh. on either side. Okay. The outside linebackers play out by the defensive ends. It's a little trickier. Yeah. So I had never, we never had the position. Right. So I mean, was that like, because I mean, that's pretty exciting to be recruited by such a. It know, was. I mean, it was Joe team. Green, and you know, I played with all these guys, the, you know, Hall of Fame guys. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was. Yeah, it was interesting. I mean, what was it like? Was it rough for you to get cut? Did you feel kind of like, what now? Or did you have a backup plan You know right what's funny about it? I'll tell you what's funny about it, because I haven't really thought of this really too much. When I got cut, you know, the, I made it, they, I was pretty far along. Uh-huh. <clears throat> and then they come and they say, you know, the coach would like to see you bring your playbook. That means you're cut. Oh, uh, Right? Yeah. So I went in and Noel could not have been nicer. You know, they're they're nice to you. Sure. When they're cutting you. Yeah. They're very nice to you. I mean, have you after you had your success, did Chuck Noel ever reach out to you? No, we never spoke again. Really? But I heard from him. Did he know that Yes. That you were the same I at got O'Neal? a message from somebody from him after he was finished. Right, because he retired after like twenty three yeah. years. And he just said, Tell Ed O'Neill I'm so happy for him. Because he actually oh. said well, before I left and never saw him again, he said, well, I wish you the best of luck. He said, uh, I think you're going to be okay. Huh. Whether he meant it or not, you know. Right. <laughs> I, it sounds like some, a line. A, <laughs> yes. And the, and the thing was, I, I was sort of in a, like, a, almost sleepwalking for the, yeah. the next few months. Right. Because I didn't have a clue right. what I was going to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
So that was, you know, and Youngstown was not a good place to live for, you know, opportunities. Right, right, right. Really, there was nothing there for me. The only thing that I had that I could have done, and thank God I didn't, was organized crime. Because I had, <laughs> I had friends in organized crime. <laughs> this is a chef. Hello. How are you doing? Now, you two have met before, I was told. Yeah, you look familiar to me. We had coffee almost every morning at Cafe Lux. I used to bring my son in there. Oh, that's right. That's, a, I haven't been there in so long. Yeah, it's been a while, but I would bring him there every morning and uh, on the way to school, enjoy the uh, Yes, the and, it's good to see. Yeah, I just looked at it. I know this guy. It's great to see This you. is Chef Lunetta's uh, place, and then he has a place next door, too. It's yeah. a nice place. Yeah. I mean, I, I've never been here before. Yeah. Well, it's great to have you here. Thank you. It's Tell us a, what you're known for and what you're what you So, I mean, for lunch, I think we could do, you know, a, a fish sandwich. The grilled, the grilled fish sandwich is quite nice. The burger's amazing. The chicken sandwich is good. If you like, we can so do a fish Ed sandwich and chicken sandwich. What fish do you think? Sandwich? Okay, I want the burger. burger. Do the burger. Do the burger. Okay, so let's, let's, let's do a uh, let's do, uh, chicken sandwich. Do the chicken. No one. Onion. No, no onion. onion. Beautiful crispy chicken sandwich. No onion and a, and uh, a steak and river burger. Perfect. Yes. You got you. I like Ron. Thank you. Good to see you. Um, yeah, he told me he'd met you before. Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. So what was I saying? Oh, but you were so after the Steelers cut you, you didn't know what you were gonna do. Well, how long? How, how long? Crime. Organized crime. Oh, organized crime. <laughs> so here, here, so here's what happens. I went to see. Here's the funny thing about my life. So I had friends whose fathers were in organized crime. No. Now, they, most of them actually were not mafia-made guys. There weren't that many made guys in Youngstown, but there was a lot of gangsters in Youngstown, all associated with these made guys. Yeah. And a lot of these guys were called associates. Okay. Right? So I had a friend, I went to school with a kid, I, I, even today I can't name these guys. He was well, in you a, can't name them because you don't remember? Or you no, can't I remember them. Because, them. They just, oh, okay. they just, you I know, know I can't get out I, there. I understand what you're saying. It, but so uh, <laughs> this guy was an associate. Okay. I went to grade school with him. I went to high school with him. I played football with him. He yeah. was a dear friend of mine. Yeah. So, and he came to every play I was in. So wow. when he, when he, uh, right around that time, so I would be like 23, he uh, called me and said, hey, take a ride with me. I want to talk to you. Pick me up. We're driving. And he said, uh, how you doing? You know, you, you got cut. You got no money. I said, no, I'm broke, you know. I don't know what I'm going to do, Jim. Yeah. His name's Jim. Uh, he said, uh, well, let me stop you. I got I to gotta see you guy about something. Come in with me. I want to we'll get a drink. So we went in this place. Fancy. A place I never would go. Yeah. And... Uh, <laughs> He went to the bar, he started talking to the bartender. I'm right next to him. Yeah. I'm 23 years old. I'm right off the Steelers, you know, I'm in great yeah. shape. Yeah. He says, I'm looking for this kid, his name is whatever, Demko. His name is Jimmy, Jimmy Demko. Do you know him? And the guy says, uh, no, it doesn't ring a bell. You know, he said, uh, well, I heard he comes in here a lot. You know, big kid, you know. No, I don't, yeah, I don't know him. So he gives him 20 and he says, look, he's an old friend of mine. I haven't seen him in years. You know, I'm looking to reconnect, but I'd like to surprise him. God. So if he comes in again, this is my, you can call this number, you can reach me. You put it on the $20 bill? Yeah, on the 20. Gave him a 20. And, th and this was, you know, 60, 68. Okay. So we left and he said, uh, you can do this kind of stuff for me. You know, I'll protect you. Yeah. I'll give you easy stuff. Just you collect here, you do that, you run, you drop something off here and there. You know, you may have to lean on a guy, but you're good at that. He said, you can make some good money until you, you know. I said, I'll, let me think about it, Jim, because I am i don't know I might be leaving town to pursue this acting thing, right. which he knew about. Oh my God, so, this is so, the fork in this road, acting so or here was So here was the thing, I went home and I was thinking about it. I thought, you know, what else am I gonna do? Wow. So my father, unbeknownst to any, he didn't know anything about this. He knew I took a ride with Jimmy. Okay. Because he was on the porch. Was that enough for him to know something? Yeah. Or okay. he, I didn't know that. Okay. Because I thought my father was just a, a, a steel worker. Uh-huh. And he said, uh, hey, the next day I came out on the porch and he said, I want to talk to you about something. I said, yeah, Dad, what? You never have a clue, you know. Yeah. He said, uh, I saw you take a ride with Jimmy. He liked Jimmy a lot. Uh-huh. He said, uh, I just want to ask you a question. Can you do time? Wow. That was my father. Yeah. I said, no. 
He said, you couldn't do time. You'd have a hard time being in jail, right? Yeah. I said, no, I don't think I could do time. He said, okay. That's all I said. That's it. Ooh. That's it. <laughs> and, and, and I said, and then I went, and then I called Jimmy, and I thanked him, and I said, I'm going to New York. Yeah. I'm going to try this, this other thing. You know? That's unbelievable. And that's what, that's what happened. Wow. So, so you went to New York instead. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it was pretty unbelievable because I was looking at uh, your career and your life and like kind of just where you were in the world. And I didn't realize there's a lot of parallels where I kind of followed your footsteps in a lot of ways and in ways that surprised me. So you... Well, you were came from a family of well, murderers, didn't you? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I did. I did. <laughs> yeah, my episode of Who Do You Think You Are? Yeah, we, we discovered that my great-grandfather was... <laughs> like acquitted of maybe murdering my great aunt. I know, I know, I know. Oh, and I, I laugh so hard truly. because the other kid from, uh, you know, that great show that your friend, you know. Oh, Jim Parsons. He was on the, He was on with you and he was like from Royal Yeah, yeah, Blood. exactly. They like took and him to like, like the middle the of Europe. Of murdering yeah. family. That's, that's right, oh that's right. God, that's exactly that so right, funny. yeah, yeah. Um, but you lived uh, at the Imperial Court on 79th yes. Street. I, I like literally six blocks up is where I first landed in New York at this place called the um, Cambridge House. It was student housing for the the school that I went to. The school was the Dakota, so I was at the I was oh, sure. 86th and um, Westend Avenue, and you were at 79th and Westend Avenue. Yes, and when I was at that hotel, it was a resident hotel. Uh -huh. It was basically the elephant burial ground at this point. There right. was old people dying. Same, there. same with my place. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Did I say about my, my night with uh, Tennessee Williams? I, I, I that's, no. That's I, we can do that. Uh, no, that's are nice. you sure? I, I, please. I mean, I can, well, here's what happened. No, you got to. Okay, you'll love this story. When I was doing the Broadway play, my only Broadway play. The Knockout. The knockout. Yes, which was your first My Broadway first, play, and yeah. it was Danny Aiello, you know, that whole mm -hmm. thing. And I had a ball. Yeah. Believe me, I had a ball. It was your first professional my, job, right? My, well, no, it wasn't my first professional job, but it was my first. Yeah, well, no, it was. Well, it was your first Broadway no, show. No, it was my first professional job. Because I, mean, I started as you, the understudy. That's right. So, okay, where am I going with this now? Uh, Tennessee Williams. Yes. There was a woman hanging around the show who was friends with somebody. Okay. I don't remember who. And I was introduced to her. You know, we'd come in for the matinee, and she was there. And she was really a nice-looking, probably... I don't know, mid forties. Okay. I was probably I was thirty. Uh huh. And uh, and she was like really pretty, you know. I don't know. There's something about her. And so I was introduced to her, and I said, "What is your name?" And she said, "Gloria Graham." And I said, "I know that name, Gloria Graham." She said, "Yeah, you, you're an actress." She said, "Yes." She was huge. Yeah. Gloria Graham. Yeah. So I'd see her, you know, like for maybe a week. And she said, I'm on my way to London to do a play. And I said, oh, great. What are you going to do? And she said, The Glass Menagerie. And I said, oh, it's one of my favorite plays at Tennessee Williams. And she said, yeah, do you know him? And I said, no, I don't know him. You know, but, <laughs> I, you know, I, I've read all, all his stuff. Sure. And she said, well, he's, you know, he's a friend of mine. She said, as a matter of fact, I'm having drinks with him tonight at Ted Hook's backstage. You know, that was on 46th. Uh-huh. No, 44th. And uh, would you like to join us? Because I told him about you. So she had a crush on me, right? Th this is a crazy oh, story. Oh, my God. And I, said, and I didn't know she had a crush on me. Because I was usually, I was a little dumb in that <laughs> regard. A little like I am anyway. Sort of the last <laughs> to know, right? So I said, well, yeah, I'd love to join you. But we're doing a show tonight. She said, well, come over after the show. Yeah. You know, at 10. We'll just be getting started. Yeah. So I do. I go over and I'm, and he's in there with the Greek fisherman cap on. They're, yeah. And you know they're drinking. And uh, I remember he, you know, she introduced me to him, and he said, "Well, hello, young man. You know, I've mm -hmm. heard quite a bit about you." So we're having a wonderful time, and then she goes to the, no, he goes to the men's room, and she said, "Don't tell him. I never read the play. I haven't read the play yet, and I've never seen it done." Glass menagerie. Glass menagerie. Yeah. And I said, well, that may be, a, you know, I'm being, yeah. that may be a good thing. You know, you're not influenced by sure. Laurette Taylor and Maybe Catherine Hepburn. <laughs> Maybe read it. I did say you should probably read it. Yeah. 
So then he came back, and it was really a wonderful night. You know, we talked about everything, you know, Brando, and he did the, yes. you know, the whole, everything. And um, that was great. That is incredible. That was great. And so then she left, and I kind of looked for the play. And I didn't realize it was, it was touring as well okay. throughout England. And so I think they were in Manchester. They were getting great reviews. She was getting rave. I thought, ah, oh, I want to see her. You know, when she comes back, she's doing so great. She died on the way back. <gasps> I think on the plane. What? Like she a plane crash? Some, no, it was some kind of, apparently she had some kind of cancer that oh was my God. metastasized. It, it killed her. And then Tennessee died a couple of weeks later. Wow. He, he was he was in his he was in a boutique hotel on the east side, and he got up and he had been drinking and yeah. he had to take a pill. Uh huh. And he thought he threw the pill down, but it was the cap. And, and he, he choked? choked to death. Is that how he died? That's how he died. He oh, choked to death. Wow! I'm so like what an incredible night that must have been. Oh, it was. All right. It was. Hi. How are you? Good. Uh oh. Well, we Here have... we go. Thank you. Of course. <laughs> One night I was in Ted Hook's and I was with Lucy Arnaz. Lucy Arnaz was doing a, a comedy uh -huh. with uh, Robert Klein. Okay. They were doing a, a musical on right right by our theater. Right, but we were at the Helen Hayes. Wait, that's why I did take me out. What? That I just won a Tony Award for. That's why I did take me out. The Helen Hayes. Oh yeah. So another. <laughs> moment that we've crossed. Unbelievable. We did the last play at the Helen Hayes before, before they tore they, it down. Before they, yeah. yeah, and they rebuilt it, yeah. So, so I had met her, and her mother was flying in. Mm -hmm. She said, you have to meet my mother. I said, Lucy? She said, yeah. She's coming in from California. Wow. So Lucy comes in. Are you telling me I'm just chain smoking? No. Drinking? She was great, though. That was the day... On that flight, she was banned for life on TWA. Because she was disruptive? She was disruptive. Wow. She said, these fucking bastards, you know. Incredible. But, so that night, in Ted Hooks, they had this young guy who played the American Songbook okay. on piano. You know, that's very common. Was in Ted Hooks where you just would always hang out in the theater yeah, district? Yeah, well, after every show. In that's that where place. you, would have, that's that where you had drinks with tennis, yeah. C, uh, Williams, and... Okay. Same place. Okay. And so I had a, we had an expense account in there from the show. Okay. Because you put on the Our show was financed by gangsters. Are you serious? No. A show called The Knockout on Broadway is financed by gangsters. Somehow yeah, that checks all, out. All, all Italian guys. Uh huh. So that night with Lucy and her daughter, in comes Rosemary Clooney. Stop it. Cheetah Rivera. No. And Rita Moreno. No. The three of them. They walk in. Let's see. They come to our table. I'm at the table. Oh my I'm God, I'm at the table Ed. having a drink. Hi, hi. Oh, this is Ed Oh, Hi, honey. How are you? They all join us. So the guy, young guy on the piano, American Songbook. So he says to everybody, Rosemary, would you like to, would you please honor us with a song? Stop it. That. Mm -hmm. She said, sure. So she gets up. And I think she sang, it was either Autumn Leaves or it was April in Paris. Okay. It was so beautiful. And then she had Cheetah and Rita go up and they did the, the one from West Side Story about to, in America. I like to be in America. I like America. to be in America. They did that. It was fabulous. Oh. oh. I was like, I was sitting there going. Yeah, pinch me. You know. Oh my God, absolutely. Because I had only been in New York six months. This is incredible. I mean, I come from this young other town, life. And you're having dinner with Tennessee Williams. Yeah. And now you're meeting Cheetah Rivera yeah. and mm -hmm. Rosemary Clooney. That's incredible. How long were you in the play for? Would, did you close or did you leave it? No, it closed. You closed. Um, and then after that is when you were like doing regional theater and went to Hartford Stage to do Mice and Men. You know that, so this is another place where we cross. I did, I did a show at Hartford Stage as well. What did you do? I did two shows there. You did Mice and Men and what else? Um, Andrew Cleese and the Lion. Okay. I did Shaw. Comedy of Errors. That old chestnut. But, but wasn't it that performance in, uh, of Mice and Men that the casting director for Married with Children saw you, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Hirschfeld. His name was Hirschfeld. Hirschfeld. Mark Hirschfeld. He was in to visit his aging aunt in, in Connecticut. Hartford. And it was like a Sunday or something, and he was bored, and he said, I'm good. you know, this play is supposed to be good. Yeah. We got rave reviews. You played Lenny? Lenny. Yeah. But I mean, but the mice and men got me married with children. Right. Did you have to fly to LA and test for oh, it yeah. and all that? Yes and no. I was out there anyway okay. for a failed pilot that never got off the ground. Okay. And while I was out there, I was at the Y playing handball, the Hollywood Y, uh-huh. and I got a call from my agent saying, you know, there's this thing that this new thing, Fox, they're yeah. getting into TV. I said, oh, that's great. <laughs> well, I got this pilot called Married with Children, and it's a horrible show. I said, well, why are you talking to me? Well, they want to see you. Levitt and Moya, these two guys, they've done some things. Jefferson's and some things. Mm-hmm. I said, okay, well, where are you? I said, I'm in the locker room with the Hollywood Y. And they said, can we send over the script? So read the script and then, you know, call us and then tell me if you want to go over there. And I read it and I thought, this is kind of funny. It'll never work. Broad. It will be thrown off the air. You right, know? right. My whole thing when I read it was my uncle who had this self-deprecating sense of humor. So in other words, <laughs> and this actually happened. And he was a judge. Yeah. Very brilliant guy. Come home from work. His wife's nickname was Curly. Hey, Curl. <laughs> How you doing? She said, Joe, I killed the dog today. I ran, was in the, in the driveway sleeping. I ran over it. Dead. His dog. He said, what's for dinner? <laughs> <laughs> because he expected bad news yeah. and got it. Uh-huh. And that's how I read it. And they never heard that. Right. You said you thought it was funny and your agent was like, it's terrible. What did you, do you remember like what the, like the industry's response to it was? I mean, it was a sh- success. Yeah, it was a huge success. But it was not, it wasn't respected, you know, okay. by, by my peers. Uh-huh. I thought though that not always, of course. You know, some of the shows, especially towards the end, we were basically out of gas. But some of those shows I thought were very funny. Yeah. I, I didn't just poo-poo it. I, I mean, it was definitely one of those shows, I think I've told you this, but like in my household growing up, like you would hear, ba ba da da love, and, me, and my parents would run in and like turn off the TV. Like I was not allowed to watch it. But, I mean, they would watch it without me, but like I wasn't allowed to watch it, you know? There's no question that it wasn't everybody's cup of tea. Well, I mean, I, 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 I was watching some episodes, um, you know, recently before sitting down with you today. And like, of course I like gravitated toward the ones that were controversial. Right. Like there's the one where you go bra shopping. Right. That was a hugely controversial one at, right. at that point. I think um, people were calling on advertisers to boycott the show and that maybe happened for like a few weeks and then they were back. Do you think any of the, like the, the controversy around the show was um, like overwrought. I mean, I, I personally think the show was ahead of its time. And usually when you say things like ahead of its time and shows that didn't get their due, this show obviously ran for 11 years, but I do feel like it was a bit ahead of its time. And It was also kind of a show that nobody wanted to admit that they liked. Sure, yeah. Or for example, you do 260 shows, you run into a lot of people and they'll tell you how the, if they liked the show. Uh-huh. If they didn't like it, they usually don't even come around. But yeah, if they, yeah, yeah. they like it, they would say, you know, <laughs> you remind me of my brother. You remind me of my uncle. Yeah. You remind me of my father, my best friend. Never them. Yeah. Yeah. I never once heard, you remind me of me. Yeah. Because that no wasn't good. No one wanted good. to admit it, yeah. <laughs> wow. That's incredible. Um, no, it was, I mean, you all had incredible chemistry and it was, you know, uh, did you ever like kind of draw parallels to like, you know, I- You know what, let me like, say, I'm gonna jump here. I did a thing on the show that, that involved Amanda Burris that I regretted. We didn't get along. Yeah. And we did, we did for a long time. Right. We were, we were great friends. Yeah. And I, I could guess, you know, I don't want to speak for her. Yeah. And I think it was, it started when we got the cover of TV Guide. And her and David Garrison were the neighbors, and they they were told they could not be on the cover because they had a rule, there's only so many can be on the cover. Right. Now, they violated that for, like, two shows. I think it was MASH and Dallas. Yeah. That was an exception. 
they weren't doing it for us. We were lucky to get it. And it was like the sixth year in or something, you know, but right. we were thrilled when we got to cover a TV guy that was big. And Amanda and David came out in unison from their dressing room. We were on the sound stage, and she said, we expect you to go to Ron Lovett and tell him this doesn't work. Right. We're all on the cover. I should have said, if I was diplomatic, I should have said, fine, I'll talk to him about it. Mm -hmm. But instead, I said, no, I'm not doing that. Right. I'm sorry you guys aren't on the cover. I really am. I wish you were. Yeah. But I can't do it. We can't do anything about it. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Lie to you and tell you that, you know, I'm going to go to bat for you? I'm not. Yeah. Do you think in hindsight you would have handled it differently or? Yeah, yeah. I would have. And that's my regret. Um, I know that that show ended also in a way that there was not a lot of closure. Oh, there was none. For you? There was none. Yeah. They, they came in, we were doing the last show of the 11th season. Right. Actually, 10 and a half. Okay. And uh, it was Christina getting married, and, it didn't, and she balked at the altar. Yeah. It was pretty funny. But we're on, we're in like, a, it's like a Wednesday. So we, had cam we were camera blocking, I think. And I look up and I see all the guys, all the suits from Fox, you know, four or five lined up. Mm -hmm. you know, and I thought, I know what this is. Yeah. So they came over and they said, hey, you're so good, you know, we love this show. And is there any way we could make this like, if maybe like a last episode, just in case oh, it God. is? Because we're going on hiatus. We don't think so, but you don't know. And I said, no, no, can't make this over now. We're shooting the fucking thing on Friday. They wanted an alternate ending? Alternate on ending. You know, probably wouldn't have taken too much and it right. wouldn't have been very good. Right. Well, it wouldn't have been thought out at all. No. So I said, no, guys, you gotta live with this one. Yeah. That's what it was. We just shot that show and then we went back and it's so funny. I, I've told this story, but it was, I was in Youngstown and there was a, a, a university hotel called the Wick Pollock Inn. Mm -hmm. It was really old, very yeah. nice. And I was coming out to get my rented car to go somewhere. And I saw this car pull in with the just married you know, with the things, the they, cans, the cans and, yeah, and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the girl, the girl gets out there young. She's got the wedding dress on and they see me, you know, like, oh my God, you know, I said, oh, congratulations, you guys got married. And, yes, and yes, and we're so sorry about your show. Oh. And I said, what? What do you mean? Oh, <laughs> well, it's on the radio, they, it's been canceled. Oh Oh my God, and the girls, oh my God, we're so sorry. And I said, I'd rather hear it from you. Yeah, yeah. So I said, let's go in, I'll buy you. And I bought him a bottle of champagne, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, the least you can do, make yeah. him feel better. And then I, uh, that was it. And, and then months went by and I got a call from Peter Roth. The head who of- Who uh, taken over. Yeah. Ed, and I said, hi, Peter, how are you doing? Good, Ed, oh geez, you know. The way that came on down, you know, there were so many regrets. So many, I said, Peter, Peter, I never got a call from you guys. It's the first I'm talking to anybody. Yeah. It was months. I said, but let me ask you something, and this is the most important thing. No gifts for 11 years? 11 no years. gifts? You know, Golden Girls, they got Mercedes Benz. Mm. Ed. Do you really think we'd let you go without a wonderful, wonderful going away gift? And I said, yes. <laughs> what is it? He said, no, that's a surprise. <laughs> what did you get? Nothing. Oh. <laughs> Nothing. He was lying. Oh, no. I mean, it's so beautiful. And he didn't scramble it's and so find beautiful. something? No, they lied. Oh, no. They don't say, no, I lied. You had no closure to that. None. That's crazy. And, I said, and not only is it crazy, it's stupid. Yeah. Because I said, you could have won the night. All you had to do was say, it's their last show. And we Huge deserve. missed opportunity. You do deserve that. Absolutely. No, no. And the fans deserve it too. The people who invested 11 years. Well, is that one of the reasons that you were nervous to do Modern Family? Because you felt like you kind of had already done that? I did a sitcom. Yeah. 11 years. When I read it, I read it twice. And I said, fuck. This is good. What did it feel like for, because I mean, that was, you know, one of my first shows on television, but what for you having 
done something for 11 years that the industry maybe didn't appreciate. Yeah. What did it feel like to be a part of this thing that was getting these incredible reviews that you were suddenly being nominated for Emmys for? Um, it was great. It was great for not so much for the industry, mm -hmm. for me, but it was the peers, our yeah, peers. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, the, yeah. Spielberg came up and said, oh my God, you're yeah. what? And that I really liked. And that's why I only gave one fuck about best comedy. Mm -hmm. Because that to me was the was the diamond. Yeah. That's all of us. Yeah. That's the ensemble. Yeah. That's why I think those SAG awards for the best comedy cast really meant a lot to us. Oh yeah. Best ensemble. Um, yeah, best ensemble. Those Screen really meant, Guild. Yes. We won it four, four times. times. No one's ever done it. You know, my dad when he came to set finally, it was on a day then you weren't when you weren't there and I was so excited for him to meet everyone. He just wanted to know where you were. Oh. He's like, where's Ed? I want to meet Ed. Why didn't you tell me he was coming on this set? I, did you? I know, you ended up meeting him. You probably him. told me and I said, I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you ended up meeting him at my 40th birthday party. And he That's was really right. excited to That's meet you right. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, do, I knew yeah. I met him. And you're basically almost exactly the same age. You remind me so much of each other. And um, yeah. I just, now I love you like a real dad. Well. And that will be forever. Listen, you know, I feel the same way. About, I mean, I just think you're one of the really, really fine actors that I've ever worked with. You're a joy to watch and to work with. You know, when I worked with you on so many of those scenes, like the Starry Night scene, the the back of the car, you know. We, when I'm in that, Sof yeah. Sophia's Gloria's dress. Yes, yes, yes. It just always seems so real to me. You know, I mean, you know, there's real and there's real, real. Mm -hmm. And when it's that good, you really do get caught up in it. Yeah. And I always did with you. Well, a lot of that, I think you would understand this, comes from the people you're playing with. And yeah, of you course. You made it very easy. Of course. So. <laughs> Thanks for meeting me for, for dinner. I'm happy you found it finally. Now you know where it is for next time. What if I just walked in now? You know, and said, I've been walking down the... I would have waited. I know you would have. That's what was making me crazy. I said, he'll wait. Oh, anyway, this you, was Ed. great. I hope, it, it, I hope you got enough. Uh, I mean, we're going to start now. That was just a warm up. Next week on Dinners on Me, Emmy and Grammy Award winning comedian Kathy Griffin. We'll talk about her returning to the stage for her first comedy show in six years, where she finds the inspiration for her material, and why she has a special chair at Kardashian parties. Dinners on Me is a production of Sony Music Entertainment and a kid named Beckett Productions. It's hosted by me, Jesse Tyler Ferguson. It's executive produced by me and Jonathan Hirsch. Our showrunner is Joanna Clay. Sam Baer engineered this episode. Hans Dale Shee composed our theme music. Our head of production is Sammy Allison. Special thanks to Tamika Balance Kolasny and Justin Makita. I'm Jesse Tyler Ferguson. Join me next week. <laughs> <laughs>